Welcome and thank you for joining us for our worship for this Trinity Sunday. It's good to have you with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. come now to a time of confession, let's just pause for a moment. Let's reflect on the week just gone and call to mind those things that we want particularly to confess to God today. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Lord, have mercy. Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a person of unclean lips. Christ, have mercy. Your guilt is is taken away and your sin forgiven. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And now the collect the special prayer for today, Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Cathy Fitzpatrick is now going to read for us our first Bible passage for today. 
The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. The one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cathy. And now, Tony Warren will read for us our Gospel. John chapter 3 from verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Tony, thanks for that. There are times in life, aren't there, when we encounter something that is almost beyond expression. It might be a wonderful sunset. It might be an amazing work of art. It might be beautiful music. It might be falling in love. There are those times when it feels almost as if trying to describe something in words risks destroying it. Well, if you've ever found yourself feeling like that at any time, 
Just imagine what it might be like to be confronted with the full wonder of God's majesty. As we heard that lovely passage from Isaiah that Kathy read, relating Isaiah's awesome vision of God, I can picture him trying to distill the wonder, the awe, the power of God into mere human words. And of course, he can only really begin to hint at it. As we read his words, we are, to borrow St Paul's phrase, simply seeing through a dark glass darkly. For to us human beings, God must always remain something of a mystery. How can we ever imagine that our limited minds will be able to encompass the full wonder of the eternal God? To quote from a later passage in Isaiah, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Today, Trinity Sunday, is a day on which to celebrate the wonder, the awe, the mystery of our God. It is a day to recognise that any attempt to describe God stretches language to its utter limits. To speak of God as being three in one is surely straining the leash on the normal meaning of words. But then, it is perhaps no great surprise that the central Christian doctrine of God should be so difficult to put into words. What does it mean to say that we believe in one God, who is known in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Is it even important that we know what it means? There have been those who have described the doctrine of the Trinity as being the most irrelevant of Christian doctrines. But I think that's wrong. I think it does matter. I think it does make a difference to us. In our Gospel, we heard the story of when Jesus meets Nicodemus in the dead of night. And as Jesus seeks to explain himself and his mission to Nicodemus, he does so with reference not just to himself, but also to God the Father and to the Holy Spirit. And if we want to understand the way that God works in our lives, then we too must know something about God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. I think it's important to learn to see this description of God as Trinity as not some dry and dusty academic exercise, but to see it for what it actually is the attempt to put into words the Christian experience of God. Those early Christians who first formulated the idea of the Trinity were trying to hold together a number of things. Firstly, there is that strong revelation from the Old Testament that there is only one God, the God who made the heavens, the earth and everything in them. Secondly, there is that experience of knowing Jesus of seeing all that he did, of his resurrection from the dead. And then thirdly, alongside that, there is the experience of the Holy Spirit, promised by Jesus, filling and empowering those early Christians. They were trying to describe who God is and what he meant to them. They were struggling with the mystery that is God himself. I think it's also important to note this, that our fundamental Christian understanding of God chooses to define God not by what he does, but rather by who he is. In particular, it defines God in terms of relationships, the relationships within God himself between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And at the heart of our understanding of God is the business of relationships relationships of the deepest and most intimate nature, as the words of Jesus that we heard underline. And that, of course, has a spin-off for us. If we wish to grow as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, then we must seek to have more and more of the character of God within us. And that means we need to take relationships seriously. We should recognise that the communion of love that exists within God himself reaches out to include us, but also that it reaches out through us to include other people. 
So, to speak of the Trinity assures us of the love that is within God that reaches out to us. But it is also an imperative for mission as we seek to spread that love of God abroad. It also means that we have to stand against many prevailing attitudes. Relationships need to be a priority for us, but they are not always such a high priority in a society that chooses so often to define people by what they do rather than by who they are. In our society, there is an almost compulsive desire to value people by what they do, by their economic worth, if you like. And that's one of the reasons why people find unemployment so debilitating, why retirement can seem such an awful prospect for some. There can be something almost subversive in the way in which the Christian faith requires us to challenge the accepted wisdom of our times. Today, as I've said, we celebrate the mystery of God. We stand in some awe at his unknowableness, and yet we dare to struggle to do the impossible, to contain the God of the universe in this description using limited human words. Now we do that because we have to. We have to try and understand God and we have to tell others of, of him. So we have to use words. When we speak of the Trinity, we speak of how we understand God, of how we experience him in the world and how we experience him in our own lives. When we try to understand God as Trinity, we realize that at the heart of his being is relationships. Relationships that reach out to embrace us. Relationships that reach out through us to embrace, embrace others with the good news of the gospel. So, let's come to God now in prayers of intercession, shall we? We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit for mercy and for grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and its governments. Extend to them your peace, your pardoning love, your mercy and your grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate Word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the Church, created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice holy, Father, Spirit, Son, mysterious Godhead, three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your Church, for all whom we remember before you. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen.
And now, as Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Now let's share the peace, shall we? Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. And now, may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>